So it's that time of year again where I need to go and walk my entire farm and update my no hunting signs. I'm actually down here. This is actually not technically my farm, but it's really close. So this is where all the flooding happened this summer. Um, you can actually see my neighbor's garage. It actually washed down this area all the way down through here and it pushed it, I don't know, probably 100 yards, maybe 150 yards from where their actual house is. Sadly, their house has actually also been condemned at this point. And so they're trying to actually figure out a new place to live. A lot of you guys uh, really helped support them, the McKenzie family. My friend Rachel, who you guys also helped support, her house is right up here. But this whole area that I'm walking through right now was basically a giant river. And that giant river actually borders our farm. And by giant river, usually it was just a stream known as the South Peachum Brook, but this summer it was a river. Actually, this spot that's right here is where that garage that I was showing you was. And like I said, it washed all the way down about 150 yards that away. Their cars also got swept up in it and went even further down. It was just insane. And so yeah, now their house is gonna be, I think ultimately torn down. And this area might turn into just like a little park because the reality is given the summer storms we have these days, this could easily happen again and again and again in this area. Like all of this used to be about the same height as where I'm standing right now, but it got washed down. And then as you actually look over here in this area, right up here is where my farm starts. So in years past, I've actually made this very same video walking down this road that runs alongside the farm. And you know, you could easily drive down it with a car, but at this point, this road pretty much ends right up here. Like as a town right now, we're having a lot of discussions of does it even make sense to try to restore this road or just like let it go and let it be a place to capture water. But yeah, at one point, all of this was road and this was like, you know, trees were here. There's all sorts of stuff. Now it's almost sandy like a beach with all the stuff that's gotten deposited. Oh wow, would you look at that? Here's a spring box right here. I always talk about tapping springs. The spring that I want to tap actually looks exactly like this. I actually tried to walk out there last week and it was still two feet deep of mud and water. I mean, even in this area where, again, this used to be a road, you can see how much water we're still getting on a regular basis. It's kind of nuts. My neighbor, he has traditionally actually sugared the maple trees that run along this road, but I'm actually surprised this line didn't snap. I don't think he's gonna be sugaring this side this year. So when I used to need to drive up to the back side of my farm and I didn't wanna go through the main way, I could have driven up this side here, but it's no longer accessible this way. Like you can see just the culverts are still in place. They used to catch the drainage of water that would run down this way and feed it into the brook. Like would you even look at the rocks that this unearth with just the force of the water? It's incredible. So it's actually signs like this one that I need to update. And really all it requires is I just write 9, 20, 24. So our task this morning is to actually hike the border of the property. And some of it gets kind of hairy in terms of its accessibility, but I need to kind of go all the way around here, updating my signs, adding signs that might be missing, and basically just getting it set so that I'm fully posted. You know, the state of Vermont requires you to have signs every 400 feet plus on all of your corners, plus you need to have your name and address on them, plus you need to date them and update that date every single year in order for your property to be posted. You also have to go and pay a fee and register with the town clerk. And so for a landowner, there are an insane amount of hoops that you have to jump through to actually be able to post your land. Just based on where we are right now, the cattle are grazing, I don't know, probably 250 feet, 300 feet up that hill. So I'm actually pretty certain that there used to be a hemlock tree right there that used to have a no hunting sign on it. I'm not seeing it anywhere here. Like it's probably gone. It could be miles down the road. So yes, the weather took one of my signs. I gotta say, getting across this embankment is actually trickier than it used to be because this used to all be level up to here. Now I gotta scurry my way up here. Whoa, boo. That was way more precarious and dangerous than I was hoping for. I guess that's one of my biggest issues with the whole posting law in general. It's really not that easy for landowners to post their land. And so it almost sort of forces some folks to have to have folks accessing their land, even if they want more peace and quiet, even if they want more privacy, even if they have personal objections to hunting or they just wanna see certain types of hunting and other types not happen. Like if you're a landowner who wants to do any of those things, you've gotta be willing to navigate situations like this 
Yes. In order to post your land. You know, over the course of this summer, I've actually helped a few different older folks post their land because they were either scared or weren't in physical shape to be able to do it. And so when I think about how Vermont's posting laws exist today, it's pretty gosh darn discriminatory too. Here we have another three foot drop, a chasm, and then you can see my sign is right there that I gotta update. This one just needs an autograph. And I know some folks might be wondering, well, why didn't you just approach the land from the other side? But it's like a 20 to 30 foot cliff drop from the edge of my land where like my upper pasture is to down in this spot. So I feel like that's even more dangerous. It's nuts just seeing how much devastation is here. A friend of mine who was killed this summer during the big flash flooding that happened down here, not too far from where I am right now. And I admittedly haven't come back over here a lot because I don't know. I've, I'm having a hard time processing a lot of that stuff. And I know I've talked about this in other videos, but the guy who was killed, his name's Dylan Kempton, really, really good guy, local farmer here from an incredible farming family that's just full of incredible people. His family takes care of a farm over there. They actually have another farm over there and they have another farm that away. He's just kind of out checking on things during the storm, much like all the other farmers I know were doing too. And he was coming down this road in his ATV, like a dam or something like, I guess like it was probably stopped up stream that was like, like there that let out and then everything just sort of rushed down and it turned into that big flash flood that you know when you look at the footage from the flooding that night what happened and so it's just heartbreaking to see a young guy like that be killed just doing what he loved taking care of his responsibilities like that it's just heartbreaking and you know his, his widow is a phenomenal person she's got two boys she's got to raise i know i put it out there before but i'll leave a link down below if you want to give to their gofundme which is basically turning into essentially a college fund for his boys and it's just it, i don't know it's just heartbreaking to see how awful it all is now and yes i think i'm still sort of processing it all getting back to the even more treacherous part of this journey it's like darn near impassable would you look at that culvert see all that dirt that culvert was buried pretty much about that deep so that the road could run basically this way and like this stream would run and cut underneath the road like this oh, would you look at that this looks like the remnants of one of my old no hunting signs here's another reason why the posting laws are garbage you just basically are forcing people to put litter into the woods, which I don't know. I'm just not a fan of. Holy smokes. I don't even know how I'm gonna get over to that side now. What's this? It's an ancient sign, <laughs> but it actually feels new. And this is not one of my signs. Definitely durable. Maybe I should switch to these types of signs. Given that the road that used to be there is no longer there. And even though my property used to creep just to the other side of it, just a little bit, I feel like I'm gonna make a decision to just start posting this edge here because I don't know, I'm worried I'm gonna kill myself trying to jump across the brook down there. So I just ended up climbing up that embankment 30 feet above the brook. This is pretty easy to slide down and it feels pretty treacherous. And yes, I don't do well with heights and I'm quite nervous about being up here like this. And I'm also very reluctant to put too much weight on one of these trees because as you can see, a lot of them are going right now. I think this tree is gonna have to become the new corner boundary because where the old tree was, there is no tree. And now my property boundary actually goes across that creek but this is a much more passable part of it so we'll cross over here oh nope gonna get soaked if i go there all right this is a little bit trickier than i thought because there's no good like jumping from rock to rock point to do it without a heavy risk of slipping i guess we can keep going through this way oh wow i'm glad i didn't cross sooner and i got the chance to come in here thousands and thousands of years of sediment the fall of this tree has unearthed that's incredible i don't know if it's thousands of years but definitely a very long time and look i've got like a little waterfall coming from my place that's pretty dope all right i think i can get cross here all right and i'm through it's gonna only be a matter of time before this entire bank erodes i know like the downstream impact of it all could be very very bad for others and so I don't know. I don't even know what to do. If anybody has any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. All right, let's take a look at our map to see where our signs need to go. Because actually, if you look, look at that blue dot, we're actually pretty far off from the property line. So I got to go west a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this is where the creek used to run, but the natural path of it has been completely disrupted. Again, just finding ways to access certain parts of the farm to mark off my boundary is kind of complicated. Just look how the soil all over here is just like a sandy beach. Here's one of my signs. Actually, here it is. Here's my original sign. 
it was still up. 9, 20, 24. All right, well now we're on the path of where the border is, and that makes my life much easier. Here's more examples of just all the sediment that's washing up where you have this problem of trees falling, the water sends more rocks and debris down, that traps, water starts to pool here, and then it gets released further down. That's what makes all of this so dangerous and why it can be so sudden and violent when like a temporary dam like that gives way and it just sends thousands and millions of gallons of water in one direction. More of the creek is on my side now versus it used to be a boundary. Here's one of my old signs right here. Here's where the old creek used to run. Kind of not really a creek anymore and most of the water runs that way. I don't know if I should be happy or annoyed that I now have more stream. Wow, would you guys look at that little guy right there? It's a red salamander. Probably getting ready to make his nest for winter or her nest for winter. I would pick them up to give you guys a closer look, but I'm pretty sure they're toxic. Plus, I never like to mess with wildlife if I don't need to. All right, we have another crossing point over here. Ordinarily, my sign should be right there on that tree that's fallen, but I think I'm gonna have to go on this side because any further over is on my neighbor's property. We're almost at the point where sort of three farms come together. So this is my farm up here. This is one neighbor's farm over here. Bill, my other neighbor, the one who, you know, his cattle escaped, that's actually his farm right there. You basically be at three properties at once at this spot right about over there. Like just naturally walk up to a tree and staple it. I've already had to set up the camera. And every time you see me walk away, I've got to come and pick up the camera because that's what it's like when you make videos about the stuff you do. <laughs> Some bones, I don't exactly know what kind of bones, but definitely bones, maybe a deer. In terms of the types of wildlife we have wandering around the farm, we got lots of deer, lots of coyote, occasional bobcats, occasional moose, fair amount of bear, lots and lots of turkeys, a lot of the other standard smaller northeastern woodland creatures, skunks, foxes, raccoons, porcupines, martins, sometimes might get a lynx, but that's kind of very rare. Actually, Pablo Barncat just killed a weasel the other day which was pretty impressive. And I guess to be more specific, when I say weasel, I mean like a, an ermine or a stoat, I guess. You know, the reason I do this posting is not because I'm anti-hunting. I actually hunt myself, pretty much always go out for deer. Occasionally I'll go out for turkey, but I also don't think certain animals like bear need to be hunted. And really they're gonna manage their own populations naturally. You don't need hunting to do it. And in fact, with some species like coyotes, hunting actually has populations exploding. And so I think it's very much a negative. Yet meanwhile, I feel like most of the discourse on a hunting standpoint is it's like good or bad versus I feel like the much more nuanced landscape management kind of argument that needs to be made. I don't feel like we as a state are making that even remotely at this point. Some of these signs have been out here long enough that the ink has started to fade. And so all I gotta do is actually do a little update. Boy, we got another chaotic stream crossing. It shouldn't be too hard to cross, but just look at all these down trees and washed over trees. Again, I say all this feeling like I should know the answer, but I don't in terms of like, what should I do about this? Should I be out here, like trying to pull all these out with an excavator, which one, would be very expensive, but two, take a lot of time. And then three, I'm not sure if it really solves any problems. So I don't know. Folks have suggestions, please let me know. You know, one thing I do find very frustrating about the posting laws here in Vermont is the fact that there's technology out there to do this in a much easier way. Yet any sort of offer to try to explore that with fish and wildlife or anybody else in this state has been met with a firm no. Even though North Dakota, which is the state that probably has one of the loosest like private property laws and allows for the most kind of free passage of anywhere in the lower 48 states. Back in 2021, they actually set up a digital posting system. And so over a certain course of the year, landowners can go in, log themselves as posted land. And then when a hunter is trying to figure out where they can go hunt and where is open land versus posted land, there's just an app that the state keeps that they can just go check and they can easily figure out where they can go and where they can't go versus the entirely antiquated and backward system that we have today where like if this poster in the back 40 acres of the farm gets ripped down and somehow I don't notice that. That means my land's technically not 
properly posted versus I could just easily log in in the summer, list my land, and then I'm done and I don't have to deal with it over and over again. And I think it's really disingenuous if anybody's gonna say that that's not really traditional hunting and you shouldn't have to check an app. But the reality is all of the modern hunting laws that we have in the state, or I should say most of the laws that we have in the state, oftentimes require use of a website or, you know, in the case of hound hunting, GPS collars. And so the idea that like that house somehow breaks the tradition feels completely wrong to me. And I mean, look, most hunters are carrying an app like Onyx in their pocket where they can easily and quickly know who owns the land and what's posted and what's not. If the state issued a map once a year, what would be the significant difference in doing something like that? Anytime I've ever had a conversation on the topic, I feel like I always get these bad faith pushback arguments basically saying that like, no, 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 you would ruin the sacred purity of hunting, but that's not the world we live in. And in fact, I feel like something like a digital posting system would be more equitable. It would be more accessible for other folks. And on top of it all, it would actually help people find open land easier. And on top of that, it would reduce the hunter landowner conflicts, which keep happening over and over here in this state and don't seem like they're getting better anytime soon. So I don't know, I'm on a soapbox here, but just my two cents. Here's the old rock wall that used to be the old historical boundary for our farm. Back in the day, all this was pasture and all this was pasture. It's actually easier to know where the signs need to go when you have this rock wall because it's much easier to find versus say like way back there where I really had to rely on my phone to figure out where the boundary was. Can you imagine just carrying all of these rocks out here, piling them up and fitting them together as a wall? I mean, I know they're going back to nature now and I have no intention of trying to rescue it just because I don't have the time or interest, but I don't know. Sometimes it is kind of fun to marvel at the remnants of a farming time that's pretty much all gone, except for little tells like this. So in years past, we've gone over and marveled at the truck that actually used to be up there, but somehow it's now washed all the way over to that side of the creek. Pretty crazy, and you look at how many rocks have washed up here. I mean, some of these were here before, but not all of them, that's for sure. Kind of remarkable just to see the difference a year makes. I just like stumbled on a buck. That thing just took off. It was hiding in this grass clearing right here. And I was kind of like dopely looking at my phone trying to figure out where the next sign needs to go. And like I almost stepped on it like right in front of me here and it took off and just went that away. <laughs> Whoa, that was crazy. This whole area is also completely changed. Like the amount of soil that's washed away, the amount of sand that's been deposited, the number of trees that have been overturned. I've actually spent a lot of time out here lately looking for Sir Porkington, who I still haven't found. It's just crazy to me just how much of a transformation this swamp portion of our farm has undergone in what, two months, about two months. I mean, just look at this. This is like a beach over here coupled with like downed and washed over trees everywhere. You know, I didn't even appreciate some of the damage that those storms did to the farm until I really got to walk into the back acreage and see what changed. And so again, I didn't really suffer property damage like a lot of my neighbors did, but just like in terms of how impactful it was, it's insane to me. Like here's one of those corner points that I've marked up in previous years. Kind of a little treacherous trying to get to this tree. All right, more stream crossings. This is hard to even get through in here. There should be a sign right about here. It wouldn't surprise me if that was another posted sign that got washed away. I had a real decision to make when it came to footwear for this adventure. It was either take my farm boots, which are like waterproof to knee high, or I wear my hiking boots, which are better for kind of the mileage and unstable ground that I'm gonna be walking through. I opted for the hiking boots and now they're kind of wet and soggy and I can't wait to get home. <laughs> well, I think we're getting to the end of the line here, but I'm pretty sure this might be one of the last signs I have to do. This sign seems like it needs some staples. Uh-oh, I think I was wrong. I think there's actually one more sign. Looks from a tree that toppled over over here. Put up a replacement sign for that. I don't think I'm gonna access that one. Have to go around through the cedar swamp. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little nature walk with me. Although I resent the fact that I have to do this by law, I actually do enjoy sharing this part of the farm with you guys. And so if you have any advice or suggestions, as always, leave it down in the comments. And thanks for watching, guys.